What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916. You're tuning into another edition of Fresh Out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share the channel. Man, I'm here with my boy Ty, um, ex Navy man. You know, we connected through our my friend Bernard, and um, we got some military tales for you guys. Shout out to everybody in the armed forces, everybody that served, all the veterans, all you guys who put your lives online to protect. America. Um, blessings to all of you guys. Hit us up to get down with your stories. Um, Ty, man, um, what made you go into the military? And tell us a little bit about your background, man, how you grew up. Uh, I'll start with the background. <clears throat> well, it started with, like, I know my mom, my dad was a pimp. <laughs> Let's we'll just start with that. My, my, my dad was a pimp. My mom was one of his bottoms. And uh, I was born in Long Beach, and then my mom left my dad and let God with my stepdad, who re actually raised me. He was a dope dealer. Mm. So, you know, I was four years old. With, I didn't know what it was at the time, but, you know, it was this mountain of white stuff, and I'm helping mix it up. Mm. And, uh, you know, that never lasts. So eventually they got in trouble. I had to go live with my grandmother when I was 11 years old in South Central. So it's kind of out of the frying pan into the fire. Oh, wow. It was the 95th and Avalon, which is, I mean, I had buddies who called it the dark side and they wouldn't, <laughs> I had to catch, the, if you know anything about LA, I had to catch the bus to the other side, the west west of the, the 110, and then they would pick me up. They, mm. wouldn't, they wouldn't come to my house. So, at my grandmother's house. So, um, Life was kind of, kind of wild. I mean, I I got into a lot of stuff. I did a lot of stuff. I, I wasn't really, uh, I, I didn't gangbang, but I had I got I had family on both sides. I, I got cousins who are Bloods and cousins who are Crips. Actually, one of my little cousins, the, I have two cousins who are sisters. Their sons, one of them's a Blood, one of them's a Crip. Oh, that's crazy. So yeah, but um, I just I didn't get in, into any gang trouble, and I really didn't get into any. I mean, I did little things that you shouldn't be doing that I should be in jail for. I just never got caught for them. So ended up, at one point, I just know I, uh, this guy I was going to high school with, and he was a junior. So when I, gra I graduated, and then about a year later, he shows up on my doorstep in uniform. And I'm like, you, you joined the Navy? He was like, yeah. He, he asked me, when, when you go off to boot camp, and then they send you home, and you can work with a recruiter for two weeks, and you don't get charged at leave. So that's what he was doing, and I, I did that too when, when I came off from boot camp. But um, he was like, just come talk to my recruiter. And I remember saying, man, I'm, I'm not thinking about that. I don't want to go to the military. He's like, just, just come talk to him for me. Okay, so I go talk to him, and I say I'm a man of my word. So I had talked to a recruiter maybe a year prior to that, and I told him, you know, hey, if I ever think about going, going in, I'll come back to you. So I told that recruiter, the same story and I ended up going back and finding the recruiter that I spoke to first and um, started talking to him they told me what I had to do you have to take a test and I went and took the test I scored high enough to get a, a what's called a guaranteed a school which was avi aviation electrician but they didn't have an opening for me so I, I went into what's called delayed entry and uh, it was probably about eight months of delayed entry well while I was waiting to, to go off to, to the military to go to boot camp the LA riots happened, mm. and I and the Rodney on, King stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the the verdict. Yeah, yeah. The verdict happened. So yeah. I remember um, while I was in delayed entry, I was like, well, because I'm always about options. I was like, well, I'm gonna do this and do that, and if it takes off, I'm not going. But if it doesn't take off, then I'm gonna go ahead and go. The riots happened, and I remember like just seeing so many so many things burn down, grocery stores. Uh, burned down just everything on our side of town it, it was gone so I'm thinking all these people they have no jobs they have no life now but the military they're still doing their thing so maybe that's where I should go I'm in boot camp actually from boot camp all the way through my my career in the military the the MEPS station where my records were it got burnt down in the riots so the the edges of my folder were burnt up Mm. And I, I remember in boot camp, when, when I got there, everybody, you know, like, what's that smell? It was the, the uh, you know, when something gets burnt, it mm -hmm. has that, that, that burnt smell. That crispy smell. Yeah, it was my folder. And 
after the smell was gone from it, like as years passed, I, every time somebody looked at my, my, my record, the hard copy, they would be like, what happened to this? Did you burn it or something? Like, no, it, the, the MEP station got burned down in the riots. Wow. What were your plans um, out of high school? I mean, if you hadn't went into the military, what were you considering? Because I always tell people, man, that if you're not doing nothing, you know, people are like, oh, I'm not going to the military. I said, well, if you go and commit a crime and go to jail, you got somebody going to be telling you what to do anyway. Yeah, that, that was something that for myself, well, for a lot, me and a lot of um, friends like, that grew up like me with, with no male, strong male figure in the house, you don't, you get some guidance. Like I got, I had guy, uh, men at church that would tell me things and, mm-hmm. and um, just adopted uncles that kind of would, would give me a little guidance. But when you're that age, you think you know everything. So I didn't really didn't have any guidance. I, I remember my grandmother who I stayed with, she told me if you want to go to college, she'll pay for it. But she also had my nephew, my niece, and my little sister living with us. And I just remember thinking, I don't want to take food out of their mouth. Mm. She's, she's not, she was retired. So it wasn't a whole lot of money. So I, I didn't want her to pay for anything for me. So I, I, I enrolled at Southwest College. And the second day, they said something about buying your books. Okay, you, you're going to need books for this class. And I remember thinking, I don't have any money for books. And I'm not going to ask my grandmother. So yeah, I ain't going no more. That's, I, mm. I just didn't, I didn't know, yeah. you know, yeah. I didn't know that there were, cause grants and different things yeah. you could have gotten. And eventually when I got, I got out and, and I did go to school and that's when I found out and if I didn't know all that stuff, I might've went first so that I can go in, go to college first so I can go in as an officer because yeah, yeah. there's book waivers and vouchers and all, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's definitely man, a lack of information and, um, you know, that therefore stagnates, uh, a, a, you know, potential opportunity. Because I, I remember even when I was in, you know, I didn't know, like, man, you know, I'll go to junior college, you know, figure out what I want to do. And, you know, there's a study abroad program. I'm like, man, I could have went and studied in Paris, you hmm. know, for two years. And, you know, they got programs. You go over there, stay with a family, you get, edu- you know, get education uh, abroad. And, you know, it's an experience, man. But the bottom line is you're getting out of your comfort zone. You know, yeah, that that's the thing back then you didn't have the Internet. So if you didn't have the if somebody didn't tell you, you know, you can go look this stuff up. I mean, you heard of the encyclopedia. Yeah. But yeah. what is that? And so th- as far as education, I didn't value it until I was in the military and realized the smarter you are, you, you pass tests, more, you more advance. More. Yeah, that, that was kind of I figured that out when I was in the military. But prior to it. I, I didn't know. So did you ever have any, um, there's like anybody, like any coaches or any teacher, anybody that, you know, kind of uh, planted any seeds in your head, man, or, you know, kind of made you think outside the box or were you pretty much just like, oh, okay, I'm just, you know, going to do whatever comes uh, accessible? When I think back, uh, there there were some positive role models that, that you know, tried to guide you and said you should do this, not that. Like I, I remember anybody who went to the church I went to, Crenshaw Christian Center when I was growing up, we were in youth church and there was this guy uh, named Willie, Willie Levy. And he became Uncle Willie to all of us. I was a, a youth pastor, I mean a, a youth uh, usher. And so all of us youth ushers, uh, Willie took us under his wing. He, he's, I, I still talk to him to this day. Mm. And he was in the Air Force. And he was, he was actually one of those guys who had sat with his finger on the button to launch nuclear missiles. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, he, he was a positive influence, but sometimes, you know, I won't even say peer pressure, it's just when you're not, um, when you don't have that positive influence co- consistently telling you what to do or, or being able to refer to it every night when you when you go home, then you, you kind of end up on your own, especially growing up in LA. The, the streets, you know, certain things look more exciting than they really are. and. Some of us figure that out and then change directions. Others don't, and they end up dead or in jail or, you know. You know, it's funny you said that about um, having that being reaffirmed consistently. Because I remember my grandmother, when I stayed with her, before you get in bed, you had to say your prayers. Hmm. You know, even though, you know, I'm not religious now, I'm more spiritual. But that kind of like when you went to bed, you went to bed on a good vibe. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You say your prayers. You know, pray for my grandma, pray for this, pray for this, you know, peace and, you know, positive things. But as you get older, you, you know, you get away from all the prayer and, 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 and just finding that, that 
value and moral system, and then you're now the world, and the world is toxic. It's a lot of this negative stuff out there, so it's easy to fall into that. And it's, it, you know, it goes back to when we talk about making choices. You know, you go somewhere, you see somebody carrying some money, and you know, you have morals and value. You look at them, you know, you don't think twice. But if you've been already poisoned with really dark energy and a low frequency, you know, you might entertain robbing that person for no reason. Yeah. And that's the difference when you can able to make good choices and bad choices. And a lot of times you don't realize you made those bad choices until you go sit your ass down for a significant amount of time, realizing that you've made, you know, your, your morals have been corrupted. You know, I, I went through that because I, I was raised by good people. My family is all good people. Um, there's some little, few little bad, so-called bad apples in there. But I, I know um, one time when I was, I was in the military and I went to the grocery store to, to get something and, and making a long story short, I, I couldn't find what I was looking for. And I saw this lady go behind the counter. So I went to ask her if I could get some help and, and I'm trying to get her attention. And I, I realized that she's, she's in front of the safe and there's all this money in there. And, and I start looking around like, nobody's looking at me. And I, I thought about robbing her for a second, but then the, the, the better got, um, the better me spoke up and said, you, you don't want to do this. Yeah. And yeah. I don't even, I can't even say really what it was. It's just something that said, you know what? Walk away. Yeah. And, and I just left the store because yeah. I was torn between doing something bad and what looked like easy money and doing what's right. Well, if you have any of those values that have been instilled in you, you know, because even before I did my, my, my bank robbery, man, I, 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 had, I heard voices in my head and you struggle with it. You know what I mean? It's not like if you if you have people who taught you taught you good, you know, you know, in your heart of hearts, like, you know, this isn't right. Maybe I should get out the car, do this. You know, man. But a lot of people are like, oh, man, you know, I'm just going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a gangster. This is goon life and this and that. And it's like you ruined you, dude, your life. That that one little choice, that 30 set, whatever it is, is it can change your life forever, man. Yeah, I've heard that said before too, and I, I I tell it to my son. My son will be 15 in, in August, and and it's I, I've told him many times. Every every anybody, from the president all the way down to regular people, we're all one bad decision away from yeah, yeah. life in prison or or the, the graveyard, yeah, yeah. Uh, a jail. And and um, uh, man, it slipped my mind. I was I was gonna um, mention something. What what were you just saying? Because well, I, I was just saying that that choice. I mean. There's little signs too. I mean, oh, people, you know, somebody's saying something or doing something, and it's like that's telling you to pull away. I mean, but you got to be in tune. If you're, if you, if you're, like I said, if you're so far removed from any type of spiritual base, and you're operating on a low frequency, which is very animalistic, then you can easily fall, you know, subject to those lower, the lower instincts. Yeah, I, you know, I remember what I was going to say is, is I think as humans, unless you're just something's not clicking up here, we all know right from wrong. Yeah. Every one of yeah. us, we know right from wrong. And so even as you grow and you go down that, that path, the, the wrong path, you know you're doing wrong. And you know you're doing people wrong. But, but you, you just, you, you still just do what you want to do. And maybe yeah. Well, you're, you're, especially if you think there's no consequence. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot like right now, and I and I tell people, and that's why I wanted you to talk about why you went into the Navy, you know, having that option, because, you know, there's a lot of young people, and I tell them, you're like, dude, you're running around here, and you're stealing, you know, Chanel bags, Birkin bags, Louis bags, okay, what do you do? Okay, how much money do I get? A couple hundred bucks, you go buy some weed, go play some video games, then you're back broke again, you know? Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, but when I joined... They talked about, okay, you got college money. I wasn't even thinking about college when I joined. But I'm like, yeah. okay. So when you're in boot camp, they, I don't know how they do it now, but back then, you have to sign this paper that allows them at that time to take $100 out of your check once a month for a year. So basically, you put in 1200 and then they, they um, it's not a match, but wh whatever it costs to go to, to college, that money's yours. So I, I signed up for it. Uh, and um, eventually I ended up going to college. There's uh, the, the GI, uh, whatever it is for, for your housing, or if you, when you wanna buy a house, 
you can buy a house with no money down. Well, they, they say no money, but it's a dollar. They take a dollar from you, oh, and uh, there used to be a limit. Like when I first got out of the out of the Navy, it was I think your limit was four hundred a four hundred fifty thousand dollar house. That's the max that they would uh, guarantee you for. Now, because I was just looking at, at houses with, with my fiance, and um, we're looking at a million dollar house, and they said uh, there's no cap. But now, with zero down on a million dollar house, your mortgage is huge. So, not not gonna we're, we're not gonna do a, we're basically eliminating doing, using the VA loan and doing something conventional. But um, there, there's so much from um, and if you do your 20 years, that's that's another thing too. Uh, like Humbles, he went 20 years. When I when I before I went in, you had uh, if you did 20 years, then you got retirement, and the way they paid it was if you retired in April, you started getting your money in May and you got, it was 50%. So if you're making six grand a month, you got three grand a month for the rest of your life. You'd retire in April, you start getting it in May. Clinton was the president when I went in and he had reduced it. So it was reduced to 35% mm. and you didn't start getting it until you're 65. Mm. That's one of the reasons why I ended up getting out going to college. And my plan was to come back in as a pilot. And, and that's another story I'll, I'll get to, but, um, because uh, there's a lot of people say so you did six you did six years why don't you go ahead and do the twenty well thirty five percent versus fifty so not still like that now no not too long after I got out they raised it back up to fifty oh, okay. and you start getting it the month after you retire so and I heard you know some guys I was talking about this on the, my live chat and they were saying now recruiters are you know you getting anywhere from twenty to forty thousand you know on the back end for coming in and. Uh, Cause they're hurting so much for recruitment yeah you know? they're letting you know now you can i i saw this is this girl that i follow she's a recruiter she's an e5 and she's actually um stationed out at in, in woodier at a recruiting station woodier and i know this from her instagram page but she's got like tattoos on her hand and she's got a tattoo that kind of comes up her neck and she's in it because i the posting or her post her instagram post has said so you say you can't get in if you have tattoos, and then yes, you can. And she turns, and you can see this oh, tattoo wow. that comes almost up yeah. to her ear, and her hand is a full tattoo. So they're they're making a lot of exceptions that they didn't make back then. Wow, because you couldn't have any visible tattoos. Yeah, yeah, I, and, I, and I, you know, I always say if you're not doing nothing, you know, why not create an opportunity for yourself, especially if you're a young person. I mean, retrospect is you know is something else now, having lived. And looking back at some of the choices I made, and I'm thinking, damn, you know, that could have took me, you know, overseas somewhere, you know, meeting different people. And I always say you're a reflection of who you're around. So if you're hanging around people who are doing nothing, or if you hang around millionaires, you'll become a millionaire. But you're all, it's all about who you surround yourself around, you know? I agree. And, and I'll tell you that too, as part of being in the military, was being from LA. I don't, maybe other people from other places where they love, where they're from, like New York, Philadelphia, just if you're really, being from LA, you don't want to live anywhere else. It's just like, this is it. This is, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, going anywhere else. And if you do visit somewhere else, you like I did, you come back to LA. But having been in the military gave me a chance to get away, to see other places, to see other things. Even though I didn't go overseas, I just bounced around uh, the United States. Um, I got a chance to see other parts of the United States. When I was when I had to go to Norfolk, Virginia, I was able to drive. I drove from Oakland all the way to Norfolk and drove back. So I got a chance to see the country. And um, there's just a lot of exposure that you get being in the military that you don't realize, which now I live in Vegas. When the when the question came to me, hey, you want to move to Vegas? I'm like, yeah, why not? Because I was so used to moving around and yeah. going other places. Whereas if I had never done, I got cousin, I got family now. Family and friends, what's up, man? You need to move to Vegas. Cal Cali, actually, 10, 20, 10, almost. I moved here, I moved to Vegas in 04. And even back then, 20 years ago, I'm telling people, you, you come to Vegas, man. There's a lot of opportunity out here. And they're like, nah, man, I'm not leaving LA. I got family here. I got this. I got that. No, get out. But see, because I was exposed to just getting away. And that's another thing the Navy, the military period does for you is if you graduate from high school and you want to go away to college or whatever, you're trying to figure out how to how to take care of yourself. But in the you're in the Navy, you, you got housing, you got money, you got food, you got everything you need, you got a job, and now you're able to just do whatever you want to do to an extent to explore life. 
You know, and I think that's one of the things as far as with myself too, I wasn't in the military, but having, you know, had a military family background and moving around when um, it came time for me like to make things happen, like I'm the type of person like, dude, I don't have to go back where I grew up from. You know, people get caught up in all oh, this is my hood, this and that. And it's like, dude, you don't own no major real estate there. You're not running a corporation from there. And as you get out and meet other people, you realize that you were living in a bubble. There's so many different things. Like you said, driving across the country, you know, I've driven to uh, Idaho, I've driven to Texas, you, you know, as a kid I drove to New York. You see, when you go through the country, you know, people think, oh, you know, the United States, dude, there's a lot of stuff to see. And so it's a whole, it's a whole nother opportunity world out there. And if you don't get out and you're stuck with that mentality, then you, and, and you, I mean, you haven't lived life. There's so much life to live, man. I, I, I can't agree with you more. I, I know coming back from, um, coming back to Oakland from uh, Norfolk, I was going, I think it was through Louisiana. I was going through somewhere and um, I just remember I'm, I'm driving and I got the music playing. I was like, what is that noise? So I turned the music off and rolled the windows down. It was frogs, man. But they were so loud. It was like, it must have been a million frogs. As I'm driving on the highway, I can hear them on, like, on both sides of the, of the freeway. Well, you know, it's crazy. I drove through Louisiana and from Louisiana to Alabama. And when you drive and do people think like, oh, you know, like you say, California and you drive on that, that one road. I don't know what high, highway it is, but there's water on both sides. And it's just like bayous. This is like miles and miles of I don't know what river that miss, whatever river that waterway that is. But you're like, dang, man, it's like what's out there, you know, but it's a highway going across a big river or whatever mm -hmm. that is. And you're driving and it's so country and you drive and then it start raining in one area, stop raining and they have all this tropical weather and stuff. And um, it, it just opens your eyes up. It's like even moving to Arizona, I just, I never tripped off the mountains, but I'm driving and I see these mountains like, wow, this is crazy, man. I went through the same thing. I was, I had to spend time in, in the first time I was in um, uh, Norfolk. I remember the whole time I was there for about three months. And I remember looking out over to the water and just looking around and being like, something's missing. And then as I'm driving back, and I think when I got into New Mexico and I see the mountains, I'm like, oh, that's what it is. Florida's yeah. flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is totally flat. Yeah. Well, same thing with Texas. I drove through Lubbock and uh, miles and miles and miles of nothing. I remember we were driving. It was dark outside. I'm like, dude, what the hell? This is, dude, you don't see nothing. If you break something happen out here, you're done. You're done. I mean, you got, miles. You got little foothills. That, yeah, that you but I mean, like you said, the road like, is straight. And ain't a pure, I mean, dude, there's nobody else on the highway. Like, literally, those oil, driving through the oil fields? Yeah. It's like nothing out there. I, for, for today, I drove in from, from Vegas to, to meet with you today. And when you're, when you're going through California, you know, you, you see, like, you come up and, and then you come over a hill. Yeah. And you can see the road go to the next hill. And I remember thinking, okay, that, over that hill is Baker. And then, okay, over that hill is yeah, Barstow. Yeah, so I, yeah. I know where. I, but when you're in Texas... You just roll it, and you'll see a That's sign. That, you'll see <laughs> yeah, a sign yeah. that says, "You uh, like something, you know, so many miles or something." Yeah, yeah, like from El Paso down to Houston because yeah. I was going to Corpus Christi. It's like five hundred some miles. Oh man! And, and this is before phones and, and yeah, um, yeah. Uh, navigation and all that. So you, you're just rolling. Well, we drove from um, when I was a kid. When my mom got married, we drove from California to uh, Galveston, the base out there. Okay. And so that drive, I mean. Texas, you never knew that big, but it took a couple days to get across. I mean, Texas is huge. Yeah. Huge, man. People think, oh, Texas, Texas is, man, we were driving and we stopped and, you know, there's cactus middle of nowhere. You're driving through there like, dang, when are we going to get there? You know, the kid. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's definitely good to travel, man. And I think the military offers a great opportunity for that. And, 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 you know, and depending on how smart you are, I mean, a lot of people are very smart, but they don't apply themselves because they have no need to. But if you can... Like you said, score high on your tests and get some of these, you know, higher, you know, echelon jobs. I know somebody that went in there, got the MRI, and they're, they're you know, became multimillionaire. Got out, started their own business, and working on MRI machines and travel mm -hmm. the world. So there's a lot of opportunity if you do, you know, take the right job and, and, and take advantage of it. And, you know, you can have a great career, af you know, after that rather than sitting in the penitentiary with a felony, get out, and now, you, you know, you're mad because, you know, you can't get certain jobs. No, yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. I, like I was saying earlier, I when I got out, my plan was to go to college, which I did, get my degree, and then go back in to be a pilot. 
and you had they had changed. There's an age cutoff, at least for the Navy. Oh. And when I graduated, I talked to the recruiter, and they let me know that there's an age cutoff. I was like, yeah, no, but they they did what they, if you're prior service at the time, they would uh, subtract the years you served from your age, and that was your new qualifying age. Oh wow! So when I graduated, I was 31. And you had to be through, have your degree, be through officer candidate school and in aviation school by your 31st birthday. So, you know, when he told me that, I'm like, well, I just turned 31 two weeks ago. What am I supposed to do now? Because uh, they, they weren't doing the, the age adjustment anymore. Uh, now, I could have went to the, and I look back on this sometimes, I could have went to the Army or the Air Force to be a pilot, but I, I wanted to take take off and land on yeah, the aircraft Yeah, because you would have been, you already had the prior, so you'd have went in on the status level with the college education, you'd have been doing it. Yeah, yeah, but... You know, sometimes you just you're you're left to your own devices, and yeah, you you might make the wrong decision. It's yeah, not a bad I, decision; it's just the wrong decision. No, no, I fully understand. Man, I think about all the hey, man different choices I could have made in life, man. But you know, um, the universe, God had a purpose. You know, at the end of the day, I'm here with you having this conversation. Um, what would you say to like a lot of the young people out there? Except we get a lot of them on our show, adults, young adults. Um, you know, trying to decide what they should do with their life. You know, they're 18, you know, graduating high school or 22, maybe trying to figure out some direction. They're not, there's kind of right now just floating around. You know, if you don't know what you want to do, what direction you want to take, I, I'd say go to the military. Go join the military. If you have some kind of idea, like I knew I loved airplanes. I, I loved airplanes, still do. So that's why I ended up in aviation. But whether you, you have a kind of an idea of what you want to do. And, and I remember, you, I just reminded a recruiter, when he asked me what I wanted to do, I, before I joined, I was thinking about becoming a sheriff or, or LAPD. And um, I remember him, I said, so that's what I want to do when I get out, so I, maybe I'll be shore patrol. Or I said MP, and he corrected me, said, well, for the Navy, shore patrol. But he was like, you no, know, think about what you like. What, what, what interests you? I like airplanes. And he directed me to aviation because mm. he said it doesn't matter what you do in the military, you can still be a, a law enforcement if you want to, or you can go any direction you want. But while you're in there, at least try to do something that, that's, that you're interested in. And that experience in the Navy, I know for myself, having gone through what I went through, a lot of the people like I knew growing up, it's like I, I look at life differently now because my life is taking a different path. And my goals and stuff, you realize that you know, as a kid, you're thinking, oh, man, it's my homie, this is my friend, this and that. And, and you're, you're short-minded. You don't look at the big picture and maybe your goals and dreams don't align with everybody you think they do. Have you seen that, you know, in retrospect to maybe people you thought you were this, you know, this is your, 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 your best friend or your homie, and now you're at a stage in your life where you're like, man, you're, you're just worlds apart? Yeah, I, I have multiple stories like that. The first one that comes to mind is a guy... We used to tell people we were brothers because um, we looked alike and we, we hung out and we, we were only one year apart, so we'd tell people we were brothers. And I joined the Navy and he was thinking about going in on what they called, it was like a buddy program where I tested, I, I, I um, achieved what I achieved to be able to, to get a, a guaranteed A school. So all he had to do was sign on the dotted line and he was in mm. uh, the same A school with me. We, we, we would go to boot camp together, oh, wow. A school together. A buddy program, and, huh? Yeah. Wow. That they offered that back then, and at the last minute, he just he decided he didn't want to do it, and so it, when I ended up getting out of the Navy, he we actually, when I got out and I went to college, he uh, was my roommate for a few years, and um, you know, I went on and got my degree and moved on with my life, and he's doing whatever he's doing. One of my other buddies used to run up and down Crenshaw all the time. It was just me and him up and down Crenshaw. Eventually. Um, I got my degree, moved on with my life. He's still running up, running up and down Crenshaw. Mm. It's like you know, some people, yeah. some people figure it out and, and mature and move on. Some people don't. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, you get attached, and it's like you said earlier. Oh man, I'm you know, I'm never gonna leave here. And, you know, and I, I have I know people like that too. Oh, I'll never move. I'll just move to a different part. You know, the area. And it's like, dude, you know, for myself, um, you know, I'm still on my journey. You know, I look at like your journey never, it never stops until you've hit the dirt. And wherever that journey takes me, I'm just going to be open minded to have the best experience possible. And, you know, that's what I try to share with these young people. I mean, you have so many choices before you think that you have to get out here and do something stupid or 
get caught up in something. Think about, for one, like you said, the voices in your head, is it is it the right thing to do? And then two, like, you know, think about your future, you know, think about long term. I tell people all the time, you get out, if you don't go to the military, you take a trade, two years, three years, you know, learn something, you know, you can become a plumber, welder, you know, a guy work on, you know, HVAC, those guys make 150000 a year. I was getting ready to say it, those guys making six figures. Six figures. I know a guy, you know, muffler shop, man, millionaire, got five of them, yeah. you know, welding on cars, you know, mufflers. So, you know, there's so much you can do and there's so many opportunities. So, you know, I, I thought just by having you share that and how it changed your options, because I mean, you grew up, your situation, man, you're, you know, no, mom and dad, I mean, Dude, it was a very challenging uh, environment to grow up in. Yeah, me growing up, there was a lot of landmines and, and I, I didn't hit them. Um, one thing my mom told me when I was young, before she ended up you know, on this stuff, she told me uh, that you can do anything you want to if you set your mind to it. So that was always in the back of my head. And um, you know, sometimes, like I said, not the best, uh, not the best decisions, but as I moved through life, I, I've, I always ended up learning something. Like the, the military taught me to value education. Then I got out and I went to school, to college, which going back, I was 27 when I, when I, went to, when I started college, and my, my mindset was totally different. I, I could tell all the other kids, because I started at El Camino Junior College, mm -hmm. and these guys are 17, 18, 19, I'm 27. My, my mindset is I need to graduate as soon as possible so I can move on with the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some, some semesters, I had 15 and 17 units. And I, I ended up, uh, I took a job with this company called Vector Marketing and I saw Cutco Cutlery. So that, that enabled me to make the money that I needed to make to live how I wanted to live, but also have the freedom with my schedule. So when you, you know, as a, uh, in college you have, um, where we're trying to meet because we have a group assignment and everybody's trying to figure out you know, well, I have to work that day, and I have to do this, and I do. That. I'm like, hey, just let me know when and where, and I'll be there because I had the flexibility mm -hmm. of scheduling appointments whenever uh, I wanted, and then you know, going and making the money I needed to make. But uh, all the while, while I was in college, I actually, when I went to college, I still had, even though I got out, I still had um, a year and a half obligation uh, as a reservist. So. I ended up serving uh, my reservist time in the same squadron that I, my last squadron, which was where Humbles was. Mm -hmm. And I just remember it was about six months that I was out before I had to come back. And I'm looking at these guys, like a lot of the stuff that was funny to me, it wasn't funny anymore. Different, yeah, different mindset, huh? My, I'm always expanding. My mind was always expanding yeah. and growing and seeing the difference in things. And I'm, like there was this one guy in that squadron, he would always imitate Jim Carrey uh, from, uh, just things that he would yeah, say yeah. from either oh, yeah. pet Living detective, color. yeah, pet detective, yeah, a lemon color or whatever, and just, it was hilarious. Before I got out, six months later, I come back and I'm like, a, we were in the auditorium doing, they were doing something, and he was making his little jokes or whatever, and I'm looking at him like, dude, grow up, <laughs> it's like grow up. So I always was maturing to um, maturing to a different level and just growing, and that's important too. You always have to. Um, Look to see what's next, especially now, because we're going. We went from what steam, the steam engine, yeah, yeah. to uh, industrial the industrial revolution. age. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. we're in technology. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing that AI. that kids should be looking at yeah. is um, like my son. I keep trying to tell him, hey, go into coding, or you need everything is going to be. It's it's not really going to be as much working with your hands as it is uh, moving forward. I saw this video. This uh, it was a robot that cleaned a public bathroom. It opened the door, it rolled in, it sprayed the bathroom down, washed the toilet, it did all this stuff, and then it walked out. When I, or, or rolled out. And I remember thinking, that made me think about when I was in junior high school, I, I was like sixth grade, and I ended up on detention. And they didn't really have a detention, so I, I just had to hang with the janitor while he cleaned up for an hour after school while he cleaned up the, the lunchroom. And I remember him saying, um, he's like, you know how to mop? I'm like, no. He handed me a mop, so I'm gonna show you how to mop because as long as you know how to how to swing a mop, you'll always have a job. I'm like thinking, okay, that was always in the back of my mind. If, if worse comes to worse, but before doing crime, I become a janitor. Well, they got robots that are doing that stuff now. Yeah. So study to be the person that programs the robot or yeah. fixes the robot. A lot of those menial jobs are being wiped out. I mean, literally, you go to a grocery store, they got one checker, and they make you check out your own and bag your stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So a lot of those jobs, you're thinking like it doesn't take too much thought. 
that are going to be phased out. But like, you know, going back to what you said as far as coding, and I tell kids like even going back to learning how to fabricate and weld and work on mechanics because people's cars breaking down, most kids don't even know how to check for radiator fluid for water. They don't even know how to change where the oil pan is. They don't know none of that. None of that. How to fix a flat tire. Oh my God, I, my tire's flat. What do I, you know what I mean? And you can learn all that in the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll pay you. you I, I, yeah. So that, I mean, there's so many opportunities and um, just to be a step ahead because if you're not keeping up, you'll definitely be left behind and by the time you'll sit up and look at, you're 30 years old and you're looking around and it's like, dude, you're, um, you're hit. Yeah, you get left behind. It's, it's a famous phrase from a movie, get busy living or get busy dying. I yeah. Know you heard that before. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. You, you can't stay stagnant, man. No. Well, man, you know, it was a pleasure having you on the show. I thank you for coming out here from Vegas and uh, taking an opportunity to share your stories. Um, you know, a lot of our listeners, viewers, really look for inspiring stuff. And, you know, we're not here to glorize any stupidity or dysfunctional behavior because I feel there's enough of that out there and there's not enough young um, people hearing good stuff, you know, positive black role models, men who have, you know, are doing something that is going to influence other people to do the right thing and make the right choices. And, um, you know, like somebody might say, hey, you know, they, they heard it from this guy and he's putting out this, this narrative, but, you know, you came from somewhere, man, and look at you, you know, you still made it up out of here. You know, so it's, it's the opportunity there. Yeah, I, I, I can't agree with you more. And, and I will, I want to thank you because I found your, uh, you know, your podcast a long time ago. And, you know, there's so, there's so many things like where you're always talking about what you, where you came from and where you are now and not to make the mistakes that you made. And uh, there's a lot of times where even now I've thought about things and then I, I hear you talk about what you've been through and say, well, yeah, I mean, at the age I am now, I really don't want jail. I, yeah. I never wanted it. I really don't want it now. So let me, let me stay on the straight and narrow. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, everybody has rough days out there. I mean, you know, that's the part of life is challenges um, that make you stronger at the end of the day. And, you know, if you didn't have those, you wouldn't have any type of, uh, it, you wouldn't have no backbone. You'd just be really weak. So you got to go through tough times. Tough times make strong men. You know, yeah, the the easy way is not the best way. No, no, because you might end up in a place where it's not easy at all. So mm. um, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. And, um, man, you know, we're going to have more military tales for you guys. Ty, Big Herc 916, fresh out. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, share the channel. Stop walking around with a crusty butt, smelly ball sack, and a funky hoo-ha. Big Herc said wash that ass. Pick you up a t-shirt at freshhouseseries.com.